Hey everybody, it's Lisa here and I'm glad to welcome you at another live stream session with ITTT. Uh, it's been quite a long time since we've met previously. Uh, actually, it was like last year uh, because I had quite a long vacation and I hope that you still remember me because um, I kind of missed these live stream sessions. Uh, so. As I have already mentioned, uh, today's live stream session uh, is going to be devoted to um, quite an interesting point, which is the ESL strategy for 2022. Uh, and I also want to say that, um, well, we kind of discussed this thing already, but the problem is that uh, not every teacher is ready to implement this idea. So I hope that today's live stream session is going to be valuable for you um, from the perspective of uh, getting inspired somehow and probably changing your um, mindset and thinking about how to uh, start working slightly differently. Uh, because we all are people and we tend to uh, do the same thing that um, is normal and um, that feels um, more convenient. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't uh, work quite well in this fast moving world. That is why I, I am here to share this idea and share my personal experience as well. So. Stay here with me and I hope that you will like um, some of the points at least and maybe you will decide to try them. And if you don't know me yet, I'm happy to welcome you at this live stream session. So my name is Lisa. I'm um, a non-native ESL teacher and a host of these live stream sessions. So I hope that um, those of you who are non-native ESL teachers as well uh, will find my live stream session helpful to some extent at least and um, I hope that um, you will get some valuable um, tip from here and I don't know what else <laughs> maybe uh, get in touch with me because I like to um, make meaningful connections with my viewers usually and I also run these live stream sessions weekly so um, I hope that we will become real friends with you guys so uh, let me change my um, video slightly let me twinkle it so that you can see my presentation better uh so yeah i think this way is better all right uh let's dive right into and um let me quickly see um the comments section because i can um i can say there are some um what some comments all right All right, there is some communication going, I feel like that. But no problem, guys, if you feel like uh, communicating, talking to each other on the chat box, feel free to do so because this live stream session is for networking as well. Uh, so feel free to do that. Uh, and now let me introduce the um, business here. So. I present this live stream session um, as a part of ITTT's approach and um, ITTT is um, a leading uh, TEPL and TESOL uh, provider. So if you feel like you want to uh, level up your English teaching career, ITTT is right here for, me, for, for you. So um, we provide um, outstanding uh, TEPL and TESOL courses. And if you want to, or if you consider, um, you know, um, taking your career uh, to the next level, feel free to check out uh, our resources. We are also presented on various social media. So uh, check this out and I hope we will keep in touch. And um, at the top um, right corner of your screen, you can see um, 
this QR code, uh, which gives you a 30% discount of any ITTT's uh, online TEFL courses. So for your convenience, if you want to uh, take your uh, TEFL certification, feel free to check out this uh, QR code. Feel free to uh, take the, that course with which suits you best. And uh, also, I want to say that uh, right now my speech might sound a little bit slow. That's because I haven't practiced for a while. Uh, unfortunately, here in Russia, I don't have much choices, much uh, opportunity to speak uh, so often. So um, that's why I might sound like a slow poke. So sorry for that. I will warm up probably. I hope so, at least. Okay. And now... Um, the topic that I have already promised to discuss today, uh, the ESL teaching strategy. So basically in my presentation, I decided to combine several popular approaches and um, you know, to present uh, this idea uh, that everything works in combination. Uh, I constantly get questions related to different teaching approaches and uh, many um, new teachers believe that uh, if they uh, pick just one it will work for uh, whatever students they have unfortunately it is not so it doesn't work like this so um, right here right now i just say that uh, it is always better to um, combine and to mix up uh, just to make sure you uh, face the needs of various types of students. And the first idea which appeals me most is that we teachers have to adjust our teaching style to the students' needs. Uh, so every time you prepare for a class, you have to uh, think of your student to be in the center of the class. So forget about this um, old fashioned teacher centered approach uh, where um, the teacher was like a leader in the classroom and all information was uh, coming from the teacher to the heads of the students. These days, um, it is old fashioned, it is um, outdated, it doesn't work like this anymore. Uh, because students also have um, some basic knowledge of different um, conce uh, concepts and they can become uh, you know, like leaders uh, in your classroom as well. And this is what you want to facil facilitate as a teacher. So in this scheme, uh, on this scheme, you can see that um, you um, should constantly think about your student being in the center. And then you should um, ask yourself, uh, how do we, res we respond to students' needs? Uh, what do they want? Uh, how to use content and all that methodological stuff to engage students into the um, work, into communication and so on. And then how um, to build those relationships uh, to facilitate the learning process. This is what we have to consider. And to me, it works best through this in individualization and personalization plus some positive relationship. Now, my personal example, I have a really nice student. She's 13 years old. And uh, when we started working, uh, she has already been kind of a proficient student, not proficient, of course, but like um, at her age, she was quite proficient. So she was much more ahead of um, the same age students and her needs were um, higher, much higher than uh, those who studied um, in the same grade as she did. Uh, so my approach was to put her in the center of our one-on-one um, -on -one classes and um, to consider her personal uh, interests, needs, and everything related to her persona. 
So uh, that approach worked really good because she um, developed that trust. And um, these days, like af after um, almost two years of work, she says that these classes, like my classes, are not like uh, school classes, but rather uh, like communication with a friend. And I believe that uh, this is what we all should uh, strive for. Uh, we have to consider our students being our friends. Of course, we should level up this, you know, uh, relationship. We should balance them. Um, and there is some limitation to what we can share during the lessons, what we shouldn't care and so on. But in general, this is a great strategy. So uh, individualize, uh, personalize everything you want to share. Um, every content, every material should be um, taken uh, based on what the student needs and then build on this positive relationship. Uh, this is how this student-centered learning framework works. Uh, and then you just add on some different um, things related to methodology, um, approaches, and so on and so forth. Um, so when you put yourself um, um, in this scheme like, like a leader, uh, it is not the same type of experience for the student. Uh, so these days, uh, student-centered learning approach uh, is the most modern and the most working one, especially in the ESL teaching. Um, but unfortunately, students, not students, we um, people who used to work uh, in a regular type of classroom uh, back in the day, we tend to, uh, you know, make our teaching style um, similar to that uh, that our teachers had um, at that time. Um, this is not the most proactive um, idea, unfortunately. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Uh, the second point, which is also relevant to this uh, 2020, uh, 2022 uh, strategy in ESL teaching, uh, is visualization. And these days, this is um, quite easy to achieve. So uh, there is nothing uh, challenging to make your classes uh, visually um, uh, friendly and at the same time interactive and uh, engaging. So on the left uh, on this uh, picture, uh, on this slide, you can see uh, a list of resources you could use to make your classes interactive and engaging with the use with the help of technology. So uh, this platform called AdVibe, it's a great um, online teaching platform uh, which provides uh, different templates uh, and um, like kind of a constructor to make your outstanding lessons. So you can uh, pick out uh, one of like 30 different um, templates and create your uh, engaging lesson. And it's gonna be like interactive and engaging, of course. Um, you can also use this platform to um, carry out your lessons, to deliver your lessons, because they have um, a video live chat. Uh, what else? Uh, you can also set assignments, um, give homework through the platform, and they also have ready-made lessons, ready-made materials, so you can just save time as a teacher, uh, just making copies and um, providing your students, those materials that have already been created by, by some other teachers. I, I guess it's really convenient because uh, it helps to save up some time uh, on preparation. Um, the next platform called WordWall, uh, it's also a constructor 
uh, with various templates, but uh, it's more for uh, creating games and activities. Uh, so you can use this um, tool to make outstanding um, interactive acti activities and then use them at your convenience uh, when you have your classes and so on. Um, the rest is pretty clear as well. So um, I, for example, work on Miro. It's like an online collaborative whiteboard. It is especially convenient to work on this whiteboard together with uh, uh, several students. So uh, if you work with groups, it's super convenient because everyone can collaborate um, in real time. And it is very, very engaging because students get involved into the uh, learning process. So again, this is a student-centered approach. Um, and you can also see three social networks. Uh, why um, did I list them here is that uh, if you add on some visual materials based on videos or pictures, even blog posts, uh, it should be um, authentic from my point of view. Of course, it, is also have, uh, it also has to be relevant. So you should uh, work, you should, um, you know, um, d uh, discover. So before you offer some content to your students, uh, try to work on them yourself. So pick out the best quality materials because sometimes, um, you know, like bloggers, they also create uh, not the best type of content. So uh, work on these platforms to find engaging videos and materials that are relevant for your students once again. Uh, and uh, these days, especially if you work with teenagers, uh, TikTok videos are perfect uh, to start a lesson or to like, you know, to break the ice and engage them into speaking activities or uh, engage them into grammar points. So whatever. Um, it, it solely depends on your creativity, but these resources are perfect to find something uh, that is going to be authentic and um, like engaging at 100%. So for interactive and engaging content um, to boost your students' English experience, use these resources. And I hope that your lessons will, um, will be outstanding, okay? Uh, by the way, if you have questions related to any of these uh, materials, let me know in the chat box because, um, you know, not everyone is um, advanced uh, in terms of technology and I totally understand that. I started working online um, almost two years ago and at that time, um, I had to think a lot and I had to explore a, a lot to make my lessons um, at least a little bit engaging. Uh, my general strategy was showing PDF files and uh, probably that's it. So we worked with some uh, textbooks um, and nothing else. These days I work um, with textbooks as well. So I base my lessons on um, those um, popular publishers. So I don't uh, create anything from scratch, but I, I add on visual materials and uh, videos and so on uh, to make it more um, beautiful and to make it more visually friendly. Okay, and the last point um, of my presentation is here. So um, the approach you should implement in your uh, ESL teaching strategy this year is differentiation and recycling. So what I mean by saying differentiation, uh, it is especially relevant if you work with 
groups or classes uh, where a lot of people with different needs um, are presented. Uh, so sometimes in groups, uh, we cannot control everyone, especially in terms of needs and uh, their um, abilities. So for this reason, you should consider that you have to vary your lesson contents and you have to adjust uh, the teaching strategy to the needs of the group, not of a person. So sometimes, you know, um, it happened a lot to me when I was a student myself. So um, I should say that I was not proficient, so I was not the best student in the class. And I always felt um, left behind because uh, the teacher offered content for proficient students who uh, were quicker, who were um, faster learners than me. And it felt so, so depressing and annoying at the same time because I couldn't um, catch up on them. So I had to struggle myself without any help. And that's why I didn't like, for example, math, uh, physics, and some other subjects at school, uh, just because the content wasn't moderated to my personal needs uh, because of the whole group. And I studied in a classroom with those students who were better than me in science um, subjects unfortunately. So I constantly felt, um, you know, escaped, maybe. So I constantly felt left. Uh, and these days, being a, uh, being a teacher myself, I understand that it is important to think about everyone. Of course, it's not, um, it's not a good idea to provide content uh, for those like considering just those who are weaker, uh, because this way um, faster learners, better students will feel left as well. So I have to moderate my teaching. I have to differ uh, differentiate. So for those students who are better, who are faster learners, I provide some new challenges constantly. And for those who are slightly weaker, I offer some easier type of content, easier activities and exercises. And of course I give them support. So if um, you find yourself in a position when uh, some students uh, try their best to answer faster uh, to, you know, especially when um, it is quiet, when you ask a question to a weaker student and it is quiet, uh, in a room for some time, it's important to make sure the better learner, the faster learner, won't uh, feel the quietness, feel the silence with their personal ideas. Um, and this way you show your support to the weaker student. Um, if you agree with this approach, please let me know in the comments, because I'm not sure if uh, this idea is relevant to everyone. Um, so especially if you are, um, if you work with a group, let me know how you do that. And the second point from this slide, recycling, um, I believe that it is absolutely a must to give uh, your students opportunity to repeat everything uh, because um, our memory isn't that good unfortunately i mean uh, that memory um that works like the the short-term memory so you have to offer um different types uh, to, of um, activities to repeat the content of your previous lessons or even something you did with your students like long ago so for this thing i once again I have listed several um, resources that can be used. So the first one is, is Quizlet. Uh, it's a great online tool to create uh, those flip flap cards. So um, 
it is useful to learn vocabulary and grammar if you um, if you explain it um, in chunks, for example. Uh, so with this lexical approach, um, Quizlet is perfect. Word wall, once again, uh, you can give your students uh, tasks uh, to repeat some content um, based on games and uh, some engaging activities once again. And this platform, Edvibe, uh, it can also be used to repeat, to retain materials. Um, so anyway, it is absolutely useful and helpful if you um, work on the same content, uh, but from different perspective again and again. Um, not just like yearly or uh, um, once in a month or something like that. Sometimes retention is necessary even of more often. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. I guess that uh, this is it um, in terms of this ESL teaching strategy. I'm going to implement this year. This is something I have already implemented anyway, but um, I feel like um, I am a bit weak in terms of retention and repetition. So this is something I want to work this year more on. Um, let me know what is your strategy for this year. And if you find um, the tips that I have just um, showed you, relevant uh, if you if you want to try them so let me know in the comments section okay and right now let's have this q a um, i will answer your questions if you have any and also once again you can see this uh, qr code uh, if you scan it you will get a 30 percent discount of any um, ittt staple courses online so online TEFL courses, not uh, all courses. But anyway, um, if you want to um, challenge yourself, if you want to bring your um, teaching career to the next level, uh, consider getting TEFL certified because um, it is absolutely helpful for the teacher, especially for the new teacher. Um, don't forget about your professional development and always strive for the excellence. And I will now share the same um, coupon link um, in the comment section, in the chat box. Give me a second. Um, yeah, it is right here. So here you are. If you follow this link from the chat box, you will also be able to get this 30% discount. Um, make sure you save it for later. Yeah, actually, there is Bill uh, who recommends another tool, which is Kahoot. Yeah, it's also very engaging. And I should say that on their um, public page, like the community page or something, they have a lot of materials, a lot of ready-made materials. Uh, so it is absolutely cool to use this online tool as well. Okay, thank you, Bill. And let me see another. Okay, uh, so there is um, Akmal John. I hope to pronounce the name correctly. If I mispronounce it, let me know. Uh, so I took um, a TEFL course several years ago. It was back in 2017, I guess. And this is how I started working uh, with, um, you know, um, this is how I started my TEFL career. I would say that was almost the first step. So at that time I worked uh, in China and I was, um, I was a graduate student, so I, I finished my university, my bachelor's degree, and I had no experience. And also I had no clue about uh, TEFL certification. I had no clue about teaching in general, but um, 
my major was linguistics, was English linguistics. So uh, that was the most, you know, um, logical outcome. I decided to start teaching because my English was quite decent. Um, so yeah, um, I started teaching in China and then I realized that I need to work on my methodology and stuff related to teaching in general. So I took this um, TEFL certification in 2017 uh, and um, I should say that it was um, a great decision at that time uh, because it helped me to um, start building my career. Um, yeah, that was absolutely a great decision to invest into myself and into my um, personal development and career, of course. Uh, and let me show you, uh, not show you, let me read you what is written on my um, TEFL certificate. I guess that uh, these days it is slightly different, but in general, the um, visual appearance is quite the same. Uh, so um, on my certificate, it is written that I was awarded certificate in teaching English to speakers of other languages. So at that time, I decided that um, getting a TESOL would be better for me. But basically, TEFL and TESOL are quite the same. So um, the content is absolutely the same, um, the content of the course itself. Um, and this um, explanation, this title, uh, this is what you can decide upon finishing your um, t uh, your study. So when you uh, finish the last assignment, when you finish everything uh, related to your um, TEFL certification course, uh, you will be able to decide which um, title to write in your certificate. So I decided that I needed TESOL instead of TEFL, but in general, they are the same. This is uh, the most common question we get, like what is the difference between TEFL and TESOL? So in terms of content of those courses, there is no difference, uh, but the difference is that um, the abbreviation is different. Okay, um, I hope that it works for you. Um, I hope that it is helpful. All right, yeah, uh, as for Edvibe, um, so Edvibe uh, is an online teaching platform. Uh, for example, I, I guess that you know such, um, such companies as VAP Kit, for example. Um, Edvibe is um, a platform that you can kind of rent. So, for example, VAP Kit, they have their own uh, platform where teachers deliver different classes and they get all the material but you have to um, you have to get hired by VIP kid um, as for Edvibe you can just rent that platform and be a freelancing teacher yourself so you don't have to work for the company you can work um, as um, an, an entrepreneur or for example, you can start your online school and you can have the same quality of uh, teaching uh, because you will have this uh, TEFL, plat uh, not TEFL, you will have this teaching platform. Uh, but uh, what I recommend doing is that go and Google this uh, platform. Uh, they are actually, um, they got they are renaming. So before they call, uh, they called themselves uh, Progress Me, but this day uh, they they are Edvibe, and I know that they, this year they will go like um, on the international market. Um, so I guess that they have already got their um, international website. Uh, it used to be Russian only, but these days um, I, I suppose they have the same. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, Bill actually gives a lot of relevant comments. Say, thanks a lot. 
um, thanks for recommending TESOL. Uh, yeah, uh, they are absolutely relevant, especially if you have no um, educational background. So if you didn't, um, if you haven't studied um, as if you have, if you haven't prepared as a teacher or, but rather like, I don't know, like me, a linguist or even something else, uh, a TEFL certification, a TESOL course would be absolutely worth it. Um, okay. Um, and as for CELTA, yeah, many people ask about CELTA as well. Uh, so we don't provide CELTA at ITTT, but CELTA is absolutely different. So it is more, um, I guess, it is more related to teaching adults, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And this course, um, some time ago, I'm pretty sure, not sure about these days, uh, it used to be um, an in-class course only, so you couldn't take it uh, in a real classroom. And at the same time, it was quite pricey. So uh, when I was younger and when I um, haven't taught before, um, I considered like what to take uh, a TESOL or CELTA. And I decided to take a TESOL because it was um, more affordable for myself. So I could um, pay much less and have a quicker course uh, with this feedback and so on. So. Mm, I guess it depends on your personal needs. If you want a more um, feedback-based thing and um, a real classroom study, maybe CELTA will work for you, but it's a bigger investment. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm glad to hear that uh, TESOL courses and CELTA as well help Bill to find a job easily. That's really, really cool. Thanks a lot. By the way, Bill, uh, have you finished a TEFL course, a TESOL course with ITTT or any other TEFL provider? Let us know. Um, yeah, I guess that this is it for today, but I would like to uh, invite you to my group as well uh, on Facebook. So I have this Facebook group um, that is for um, like a small community uh, for TEFL teachers. Um, I hope that this year I will be more active on this group. Uh, but in general, if you have any questions related to TEFL, TESOL, um, English teaching in general, feel free to join in my Facebook group and keep in touch. Um, I think that uh, ESL teachers can help each other a lot, uh, maybe share ideas, exchange experience. So this is uh, where we can do that. Um, I invite you in the group and um, yeah, thanks a lot for your uh, participation. Thanks a lot for coming to this live stream session and staying with me um, for 40 minutes. Um, I hope that my pronunciation haven't uh, bothered you today because I had a really long break after, you know, those active uh, weekly live stream sessions. And unfortunately, I have no um, opportunity to uh, practice my English speaking in daily life because I live in Russia, uh, but I work um, with a teacher myself. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, uh, actually I have a really uh, great news um, I took IELTS uh, last month, so in December, and I got 8.0, which is really awesome. Um, I, I hope that uh, this score will go even up. Uh, so, yeah, this is something I work on myself uh, as well. And let me know 
uh, what do you do, um, especially non-native ESL teachers, what do you do to work on your personal uh, skills and uh, on your English as well? Uh, so keep in touch with me and don't forget about this QR code. So if you want to take a TEFL course, yeah, just make sure you um, take this incentive and uh, get a really nice discount. So see you next week, guys. And this week you will also uh, you will also meet my friend, not my friend, my colleague Linda. Well, actually, she's my friend as well. Anyway, uh, so you will meet my colleague Linda at the end of this week. Uh, so uh, I go live um, at the beginning of the week, and she goes live at the end of the week. And um, if you listen to this live stream session in the form of a podcast, thanks a lot for um, downloading. Thanks for a lot for supporting uh, our little project. We hope to be helpful and see you next week. Bye-bye.